Hiya folks. You've no doubt at least heard about this thing called Kubernetes. Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration system, which is another way of saying it's a platform for deploying and managing the life cycle of applications packaged in container images. If you're a Spring developer, you may be wondering how Kubernetes applies to you and your projects. If so, then great news. Spring Boot offers some fantastic build time support for creating container images of your Spring applications and a little bit of runtime awesomeness for dealing with other factors of containerized deployment, such as configuration, liveness and readiness, and graceful shutdown. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a Spring Boot application into a container image, deploy it in a Kubernetes cluster, and configure it using a Kubernetes resource known as a config map. What's more, I'm going to do all of this without writing even a single line of YAML. So sit back, relax, and watch as I deploy a Spring Boot application in Kubernetes. Before we get started, there are a few prerequisites that we're going to need to settle. First off, you're going to need Java and a Java IDE of your choosing. I'll be using Spring Tools running on Eclipse. You're, you'll need a Kubernetes cluster. I'm going to use Kind, which is short for Kubernetes and Docker, but any Kubernetes cluster should work. You'll need Docker and the Docker command line tool. I'm on a Mac OS machine, so I'm using Docker Desktop for Mac. You'll need a Docker Hub account, and you'll need kubectl, the command line tool for working with Kubernetes. I've also aliased kubectl to simply the letter K for lazy typing reasons. So if you see me typing K, what, it, what that really means is kubectl. Okay, with that said, let's get started. All right, to get started, I've gone ahead and I've created a simple Hello World Spring Boot application. It's a nothing very exciting about it, really. It's a very simple application. As you can see, here's the, the POM file. I'm using Maven to do the build. It uh, has a lot of basic stuff in it. We have Spring Boot Starter Web. So basically, I'm going to be using Spring MVC to create this API. I'm using the configuration processor uh, dependency just so it won't show me uh, warnings when, it, when I'm setting configuration properties in the application.properties file. And I, of course, we have the Spring Boot Starter test. Now, I'm not going to be writing any tests during the course of this video, but it's there anyway. You sort of get it for free when you start a new Spring Boot project. Now, as a Hello World REST API, you would expect that there would be a Hello Controller. And here it is. Nothing very exciting. It has a Git mapping method that handles Git requests for slash hello. And instead of just returning a hard-coded hello world, what it returns is the message property from an injected greeting props bean. So greeting props is injected. We echo out whatever the value of the message property is. Now the greeting props class itself is not that exciting. It's pretty basic here as well. It has that message property. It has a setter and a getter for that message property. It's annotated with component so that Spring will pick it up and automatically make it a, a component within the Spring application context. It's also annotated with configuration properties, which is a Spring Boot way of saying, go find the properties that are prefixed with, in this case, greeting, and bind them to the properties of this class. So if there is a greeting dot message property anywhere in any of the uh, property sources that Spring Boot uses, then it will get bound to this string message property. Cool. For example, I have application properties. Gre application properties has a greeting dot message property that is going to be bound to that greeting props message property because it has a prefix of greeting and its name is message. It's simply set to hello world. Nothing very exciting here either. Now, if you've ever seen me present anywhere before, uh, or you've worked with me on any project, you probably know that I favor application.yaml files over application.properties. But I did promise that I wasn't going to write a single line of YAML during the course of this video, and I'm going to keep that promise even when it comes to writing the configuration properties. Okay, with that said, I've already, I'm already running the application. Let's just go ahead and kick the tires on it and just make sure it even works. So here we go. I'm going to open up a window. I'm going to make that font a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. And using curl, we can say curl localhost 8080 slash hello, and it should say hello world. And there it is. It works. Now, 
Let's build this into a container image that we can run in Docker or later deploy in Kubernetes. Before we can build this into an image, we have to settle on what the image name is. And the best way to do that, there's actually several ways of doing it, but the way I prefer to do it is come over here to the build file, to the pom.xml file, and look for the Spring Boot Maven plugin. And in here, I'm going to add a configuration called image sub property called name. So I'm going to set the image name here. Now, image names are typically divided into three parts. There's one part that's kind of like the organization or the group it belongs to. There's one that's the actual image name, the artifact name, and there's one that's the version. Those are the three main parts. And if you think about it, those correspond really nicely to Maven's own group, artifact, and version properties. So why don't we just leverage what's already here in the build to do that? So I'm going to say project dot Oops. group ID slash project dot artifact ID colon and this is where we give it a label or a version and the version is going to be simply project dot version now that we have that we're ready to go build the the image so going to the command line I'm gonna say maven w which is the maven wrapper I'm gonna say spring boot to use the Spring Boot Maven plugin and I'm just going to ask it to build the image. I'm going to hit enter and some magic's going to happen. Now this is going to take a few minutes. It's not that bad but I'm pretty sure you don't want to watch it and wait for it to happen with me so I'm going to speed up this part of the video in post editing and we'll be there in just no time at all. All right, it looks like it's there. It looks like we're ready to roll. So let's go ahead and run this. To start, I'm not gonna run this in Kubernetes just yet. That'll come a little bit later in the video. For now, I'm gonna run this simply in Docker. So to do that, I'm gonna say Docker run, and I'm gonna set a port forwarding because I do wanna be able to hit the, make a request to the server running inside the container. So I'm gonna forward the local port of 8080 to the internal port of 8080. I'm going to tell it to run Habuma slash hello Kate's version 001 snapshot and I'm going to kick that off. Now what that's going to do is it's going to take the Habuma hello Kate's image that I built earlier that's currently residing in my local machine's Docker cache. It's going to run it and assuming everything goes well, Tomcat will start up on port 8080 and the local host Will be forwarded to that so I could I could actually hit localhost 8080 and that'll be forwarded into the container on Tomcat's port 8080. Now while that's starting up I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to make a request using curl. So curl localhost 8080 slash hello. Now it's not quite started. Look I saw Tomcat scrolling by on the right side over there. Now that it's started up I should be able to say localhost 8080 hello, make a get request to that, and assuming everything worked well, I should see the words hello world. And it worked. You even saw, possibly on the right side there, the, the console kind of scroll up a little because I actually hit something and something got logged. But nonetheless, we, we were able to build a Spring Boot application into a container image and run it in Docker. Now before we go any further, what I need to do is I need to push it out to my Docker Hub account. So to do that, I'm going to say docker push habuma slash hello kates 001 snapshot. And all that's going to do is push it out to my uh, Docker Hub account so it'll be ready for me to pull later on into a Kubernetes cluster. All right, now that we've built a container image of our Hello World API, we're ready to deploy it into Kubernetes. Now, you may have heard that Kubernetes resources are usually created using a lot of YAML. 
But I promised at the beginning of this video that I would not write a single line of YAML, and I'm going to keep that promise. So instead of creating a deployment YAML descriptor, a deployment manifest, like I, you might have seen in other videos, I'm going to do something very different. I'm going to use a library called Decorate. And to be perfectly Kubernetes compliant, they've replaced the C in Decorate with a K. So let's go over to my POM file. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And I'm going to find an appropriate place to, to put this dependency. I'm going to give it a group ID of io.decorate. There's that K. I'm going to add artifact ID of Kubernetes. Just help me uh, help me type this. Yeah, Kubernetes Spring Starter. So Decorate comes with support for working with Spring Boot in the form of a starter dependency. And the version I'm going to use is what I believe is the latest version, 2.9.3. I'm just going to simply add that to the build. I'm not going to do anything else. All right, let's build it. But instead of building it straight to an image just yet, I'm just going to do something much simpler. I'm going to go to the command line. And I'm going to say Maven wrapper. I'm going to ask it to just do a package. And this is going to do the build. This is going to do the test. It's going to do all the stuff it normally would. It's going to compile everything. It's going to do all sorts of things like that. While it's doing that, I just want to point out, again, this dependency is the only thing I've added. Just simply that. That's all I needed to get what I'm about to show you. There's a lot of magic happening behind the scenes here when I do that build. And if I hop over here, you're going to see it's finished. Let's take a look at what we got. Cat, target, classes, metainf, decorate, and notice there's a YAML file and a JSON file in here. Kubernetes will work with both. Most people only are aware of the YAML approach to this. But let's look at that YAML file. And there you go. There's a deployment descriptor for my project. And notice I didn't have to do anything special to make that happen. It even knows things about my application, about my um, my image name, such as the fact that it's Habuma, Hello Kates, version 001. All the stuff I needed is there. It's, it's just ready to roll. So what are we going to do with it now? Well, let's uh, apply it. Let's apply this to Kubernetes cluster. And as you can see, I already have a Kubernetes cluster um, created. Uh, I've created a hello namespace. There's nothing in it. And so we're going to use this cluster to deploy it. So I'm going to say kubectl apply dash f target classes meta -inf, decorate Kubernetes YAML. And it says it's been created. Let's go see. And look, there it is. It's been deployed. We have a service. We have a pod. It's still creating the pod, so we're going to try again. And it looks like that pod is running now. Now, what I should be able to do at this point is do a port forward from the service localhost 8080 to the internal host of 80 or an internal port of 80 for that service, because that service is running on port 80. All right, now we'll come back up and use this window again to see what happened. curl localhost 8080 slash hello. And it says hello world. It works. We just deployed a Spring Boot application into Kubernetes without writing a single line of YAML. Now, there were several lines of YAML. You can even see them at the top of this window. But here's the point. I did not write that YAML. That was created for me by Decorate. And what Decorate does is it makes some assumptions about what your project's going to look like based on things that are in your build and as well as some other things as well. Now, now that we've tried it and now that we've deployed it, let's add some configuration to it. Let's do something different with it. Because what I want to show you next is how to take advantage of a config map to configure a Spring Boot application. So let's do that next. All right, so we've added the Decorate Spring Starter to our build, and as a result of that, when we built it, we got a deployment manifest that included a deployment resource and a service 
for our Spring Boot application. But what if you want to customize that deployment? What if you want to add something to it? And in fact, in this section of the video, I am going to create a config map that we're going to use to configure our Spring Boot application. So to start, let's actually create that config map. So there's a lot of ways to create a config map. You can create a config map using a YAML file. And, but I'm not going to do that. I only need a single property, and so I don't need a full-blown YAML file to do that. Instead, I'm gonna just use the shortcut called create config map. I'm gonna give it a name of greeting config. I'm going to give it a from literal, which basically says, I am telling you what the single property is that I need. I'm gonna say greeting dot message. You may recognize that property as the one that our greeting props class is referring to. So greeting dot message. And here, instead of saying hello world, I'm gonna say hello Kubernetes. Just to have something different and just to be obvious that we're actually using this value and not the one that's hard coded in application dot properties. Oops, I ended up with an extra quote in there. Let's take that quote out. And there, our config map is created. Let's take a quick look at that config map and see what it looks like. So k get, how about k describe config map greeting config. And you can see there it is. Greeting message has a single property of hello Kubernetes. That is exactly what we want. Now, before I move any further, it is worth noting that Kubernetes has another means of collecting properties into resources called a secret. And a secret resource is very much like a config map. The only difference is it's, you know, more secret. Uh, it's good for keeping things like passwords or other kinds of credentials or, you know, keys or anything like that that you may use for encryption. It's good for keeping those kinds of things, things that you don't want just laying around in the open. And every, even though the rest of this video, I'm going to be using con this config map I just created, everything I'm doing will also work equally well with a secret if you're using that instead. But moving on, let's change our, config, our Spring Boot application to use this config map. Now the good news is you don't have to change a single line of the Java configuration of the Spring controller or anything like that to tell it that you're gonna use this config map. The one thing you do need to change, however, is we're gonna go over here to our basic Spring Boot application, and you could actually do this in a lot of different places, but this is the best place to do it, is I'm gonna put in here a Kubernetes application annotation. And what the Kubernetes application annotation does is it allows you to customize the YAML file that's produced by Decorate. And the way we're going to customize it is in a couple different ways. I'm going to do this on multiple lines, so I'm going to go ahead and give me a break right there. And I'm going to say config map uh, volumes. So I'm going to add a basically mount a volume to my uh, to my YAML file, or to the pod that my YAML file creates using a config map, oops, helps if I type it right, volume, and the config map name I want is, config map name is, as you'll recall, I called it greeting config, that's the name I gave to the config map. I need to uh, give it a volume name of greeting config it can be pretty much anything you want it to be I'm gonna call it greeting config volume and there's one other little odd thing you have to set you have to set default mode now what this means is when I do mount this config map it's going to mount onto the file system of the pod that's deployed and by default for whatever reason decorate default to Oh, I can't remember what value they use, but the, the basically it, it's like 600 or 600 octal, which basically means that root can read it and write it, but nobody else can see it. What that would mean is I can't see it either. Spring The Spring application couldn't see it either. I need to make it available for Spring to see. So to do that, I'm just going to set it to octal 644. That means 600, same thing that the, the root had, but you know, read and write for everybody else. Or I'm sorry, read for everybody else. All right, that's a good start. I'm gonna put this parentheses on, the, on that same line just so it's not giving me too many lines. And I'm going to say 
mouse. Now this is the point where I'm going to mount the um, mount the config map to a path on the file system. So I have to give it a name. So let's put that on another line. I'm going to say name equal greeting oops greeting config volume. That refers to the config map volume that you see above. And I have to give it a path. Where am I going to mount this? Well, I want to map it at Etsy config. You can map it anywhere you want, but Etsy config is a good convenient place to put these kinds of things. Now, finally, the last thing I need to do is I need to tell Spring where to go look for this when it's when it's loading up all of its configuration. It's going to load it from multiple property sources. I need to tell it to among those other property sources to load the Spring Boot configuration from Etsy config. And the way you do that is you say this, you say invars, you're going to set an environment variable on that pod. I'm going to say at env and in there I'm going to say, I'm going to give it a name, spring config import. Now spring config import, that's, an, that's a property that you can give to Spring Boot to tell it where to load, where to import configuration from, and more specifically, the value, oops, I didn't mean to do that, the value is going to be at, and this is the fun part, config tree, oops, I, slash Etsy config slash. Now that last slash is important. If you don't have that last slash on there, the Spring Boot app will fail to start up and It'll be rather odd in a Kubernetes world. You have to go dig in the logs and figure out why it happened. Uh, so just don't forget that last slash. It's kind of important. All right, with that said, I am done with that. Let's go ahead and build the image. Actually, before I build the image, because we made some changes, let's create this as 002 snapshot. Let's do it that way. So that way we have a completely different version of the image. So let's go build the image. I'm going to say Maven Wrapper, Spring Boot, build image exactly as I did before. I'm going to let that run. It's going to take a few moments. I'll edit this in post editing so that you don't have to wait for it. So see you in just a second or two. All right, it looks like it's done. Before we do anything, let's take a look at that YAML file that was generated by Decorate. It's going to say cat, target, classes, meta inf, Decorate, Kubernetes YAML. Let's take a look and see what we got. Oh, it looks like it picked up, it didn't rebuild it. So I tell you what we're gonna do. We are going to do that again. Bear with me, I'm sorry. I should have done this the first time. So Maven wrapper, clean, that way it knows to regenerate that. Clean, spring boot, build image. All right, looks like it's done. All right, so let's take a look at that. So it's gonna be cat, target, classes, meta inf, decorate, Kubernetes YAML. And you're gonna see a lot of things up here that are familiar, things we've already seen before. The image, for example, is going to be Habuma Hello Kate's 002 snapshot. You already see right above that that I'm setting spring config import as an environment variable to config tree slash Etsy config. So all that is correct. So far, so good. And as you look down here, you're gonna see that we have a volume mount. We're mounting the volume known as greeting config volume to Etsy config to that path in the in the pod when the when the pod starts up down here is our volume our volume is a config map volume its name is greeting config it's I'm sorry the config map itself is greeting config the name of the volume is greeting config volume which is matches up with what we have up here for our volume mount and the default mode is 420. Now, wait a minute, I set the default mode to 644. Why is it 420? Well, 644 is the octal value. If you convert 644 octal to decimal, you're gonna get 420. Uh, it's a little confusing that way, but that's what we have. So the default mode is 420. That's going to, which means 644, that means that the Spring application should be able to run it. So let's deploy that. And actually, before we do, Let's take another look. And you're gonna see we still have the stuff in there from before. Let's get rid of it. Just kind of make sure we're all cleared out. So dash F, target, classes, meta inf, decorate YAML. Okay, just kind of clean all that out. We'll give it a chance to clean, to clean up. 
and looks there's no resources everything's gone we do still have our config map you can see our greeting config config map is still there so so far so good let's deploy it so k apply dash f target all this right there and it's deployed great let's take a look and see what we got uh, error image pull that's awesome you know why uh, this is not what I intended, but it's a great opportunity to show you this is what happens if you do not push an image out to Docker Hub. The Kubernetes cluster is not able to pull an image from my local Docker cache. It's going to try to pull it from some Docker repository, in this case, Docker Hub. And so I need to push it out there. Not a problem. So Docker push habuma slash hello kates 002 snapshot. And we'll give it a second. Should be out there in no time at all. Notice it's reusing a lot of layers that already existed from that previous push. It's only having to push a few layers that are different in this particular build. But here we go, it's ready to roll. Let's try that again. Now, it's still got the, the error image pull because, well, it's still failing. But if I say K delete, actually I have it in my history, might as well just use it. And then we'll apply again. Give it a second to get its job done. Okay, get all. And now you say it says container creating. Try it again. Now it says it's running. And now the container's running. I'm still going to give it a second or two longer just to be totally sure that the Spring Boot applications have been running, just to be sure that Tomcat is ready to roll. And now I'm going to say, K. Okay, port forward, as you'll recall, we did this before, k port forward, service, hello kates, localhost 8080 to internal 80. Great, there's, there's our port forward. Let's do a curl and see if it works. Now, if this works, it should not say hello world, it should say hello Kubernetes, and there you go. It says hello Kubernetes. And the reason that works is because we told Spring to use the configuration at the path called config tree colon slash Etsy config slash, that last slash is important, which itself was created because we mounted a config map into the file system of the pod. Awesome. So everything worked. We deployed the application, we mounted the config map, we used the value of greeting dot message in the config map and we echoed it out on our API. Let's recap. <music> Kubernetes is an incredibly popular platform for deploying containerized images. Although it has been said that Kubernetes is not itself an application platform, but a platform on which to build application platforms, it's still very common for projects to deploy applications directly to Kubernetes. Spring Boot makes easy work of this, and Decorate is a useful library to eliminate the need to manually write YAML deployment manifests. Moreover, by mounting config maps or secrets as volumes in a deployment, and using Spring's config tree prefix when importing configuration, Spring Boot applications can take advantage of Kubernetes' native configuration model. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments and let me know what other topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. And by all means, please share this with anyone who might benefit from it. And check out my books. Spring in Action, now in its sixth edition, covers some containerization topics in the final chapter. And for something completely different, check out Build Talking Apps for Alexa, my new book on creating voice-first experiences for the popular Alexa platform. Until next time, thank you very much.